So in this video today, we're going to be talking all about how to close more mortgage deals as a mortgage broker. This might be something that you are wanting to do. Closing deals is a hard thing to do for many mortgage brokers. And I've been lucky enough as a mortgage business coach to be able to train advisors to get great results. Here is one of my clients who's using the techniques that I'm going to go through with you today. He's closing four out of five people. He says it's a dream. It feels like they're wanting to work with me rather than trying to get them to see the benefits. You've also got another client of mine here in, in three months made £82,000 just by following the same sales processes and I love how it puts in here too easy now it gets that simple that it's not even difficult to close leads and it should be like that when you do this correctly and so we're going to unpack those methods for you I'm going to share some of those tactics and some of the concepts that I help advisors do when I work with them one-to-one -one. so the first thing we need to be talking about is the psychology of closing when people are buying a house there is they are buying more than just a mortgage and most people if who are going onto that property ladder this is a very stressful and exciting and exciting time for them and so to them it is the idea, it's the picture of buying this dream home. If they're first time buyers, it's home ownership. If they are home movers, it is a larger home. All of these things are massive milestones in their life and you need to make sure that, that you feel the same excitement as they do for that situation. And so the psychology of closing is about making sure that you match them in a specific way. Now, one of the things that's quite important across the board is that we're establishing that you are an equal in this relationship. And so when you jump into your first discovery call or meeting with them, it is important that they know that you are also deciding whether or not it's a good fit. Now, a lot of these concepts that I'm going to go through today, they have been taken from a and built upon from a book that I absolutely love. I've recommended to, to a lot of my clients, including people like, like Matt Chapman, Gary Waters, is The Win Without Pitching Manifesto by Blair ends now this specific book is an absolute game changer it's helped me massively in regards to closing more deals and i definitely recommend it's very short it's it's as an audio book it's about four hours i'd highly recommend you check it out it's about the creative industry but remove the word creative and put mortgage in and you'll be off to the races it's great in that book he talks this idea of you're never trying to pitch and so this is the idea of closing we're trying to understand is you're not trying to pitch to people you are trying to get them to relate to you and you're also trying to even when you do it very well you're trying to get them to pitch to you so how do you do that in a mortgage but it's actually really interesting and i'll explain a couple of the concepts around it so the first thing you want to do is you want to establish a fit check okay so a fit check is this idea that when we come into this call we're establishing straight away that this call is not for me to beg for your business but i'm a busy person and i'm going to see if we're a good fit and you're going to effectively interview me and I'm going to interview you. Why are we doing this? Because it puts them straight away on the back foot. Many brokers and many advisors are scared to do this. Just do it. It's really not that big a deal. It's absolutely fine. It puts you in the forefront. And that's one of the first things you want to be doing. The next thing you want to be doing from there, and this is what I really love, is you want to then be identifying pain points. So you're driving through pain points for the client, and this is the psychology of it. When you're identifying pain points for them, what you're going to be doing is addressing in their mind potential obstacles within the purchase. So this is within the, the process. This is potential process problems. You're making them aware of pitfalls and problems that they were not aware of. And this is going to make you look like a very good advisor, a very knowledgeable advisor. And so these are the, the, the psychology we're trying to, to play with this is that these people need to feel like they're in safe hands. And then the third bit in regards to the psychology of it is actually concerns. And so the concerns you have is these are your problems. What do you actually see as a problem for the client with working with you? And this is effectively saying, I would be concerned about the fact that you didn't respond to the emails on time or I'm concerned you didn't bring the documentation to me when I asked for it. This is very counterintuitive. Most people will think, why would I do that? Why would I raise concerns to my client? And again, Blair talks about it in that book, which is this idea of when you start to raise concerns to a client, they start to pitch back to you. They start to tell you why that won't be a problem. So you're getting them effectively flip on its head and say, I won't do that. I'll make sure my documents are on time. 
Now, what's really interesting with this is that many of us are scared of losing business to do this, but this is fundamentally one of the key things that allows people to start winning business. So this is, is this idea and closing people down is this idea of, if you think about it, if we're doing a fit check, so it is two way, it's not just, yes, sir, I'll do your mortgage. Of course, thank you so much for your business. I'm so grateful. It's not that it is. I'm a busy person. I want to see if you're a right fit. Then you have, you've got this idea of pain points that you're then addressing problems that they could see. So it's like, these are process problems you may not have thought about. And then you have, which they make them like you. And then you have this concerns part, which makes them go, oh, I want to work with you. And this is all about this fit check thing we're talking about. Because if people feel like they can't have you, they will start to want you more. It's crazy. And so this is a really great concept to follow. So this is a psychology. Let's now move on to top sales techniques for mortgage brokers that you can follow. There is a couple of techniques that I think you should be looking at in order to really close deals. And some of these are going to be in the appointment and some of these will be before the appointment and after the appointment. So the first one you have, and this is in the appointment we have is active listening. The idea of this is most brokers focus on selling. They focus on trying to get their product straight to the person and to the person who's watching or they're speaking to. They're not actually listening to the situation. They're not actually going through and going, okay, that could be a problem and, and identifying those issues. And this is really, really common and sadly really easily fixed. And yet everyone can't get their own ego out of the way, to be completely honest with you. Now, how do you active listen? You want to do open-ended questions. When people work with me one-to-one, -one, we work on all these things. But there is a whole section on open active listening and how to do this, and it's built within the appointment. But you need to have open questions. You need to make the client drive the conversation, and you're just there to guide them. And when you do this, your client will tell you significantly more about their situation. And what that also does is makes them trust you more. Because funnily enough, people like people who let them talk about themselves. The next one we have is follow up. So we need to master the follow up. If someone's going to book in through a booking link, like a Calendly, which is what you should be using or something equivalent to that, a follow up system should be there to remind people before they come to the appointment. So you're following them up. It's a reminder, but it's still a follow up because the moment that somebody has booked in, you are going, okay, just so you know, I'm going to do this. Just so you know, just a reminder. These follow up things make you look like you are significantly more organized and on the ball. Another thing that's really interesting actually around follow up is after the appointment, if they have agreed to proceed and you want to work together, the follow up after that, which is like chasing people through finding a house and every single process, you should be in constant contact with the client until they have finished really, all of these things are going to increase the chances of them closing and crossing over the line and you getting that really good deal, that mortgage deal, which really what we're after is the insurance sales because that's where the big income comes in. And so everything up until the point we do the insurance, we're still in the sale. And so follow up all the way through. So all the way through the looking for a house, don't just leave them and say, ah, oh, do you know what? If you're looking for a mortgage, go, you know, you're looking for a house, sorry, go away and look for a house. And when you're ready, get in touch. Massively no, don't do that. That's... No, no, no. That is like the worst thing you can possibly do. And so we need to make sure that we prioritize follow up. Now, the third one we have, number three, is clear communication. When it comes to communication, it is a clear route to communication. I had a client recently speak to me about this who said that they had had feedback that that people were just communicating a bit by WhatsApp and a bit by social media and then a little bit by email and then by phone call. Make it really clear. Make it really clear where people can com communicate with you. I'm a big WhatsApp fan for me, for example, on my phone. the bat. This is like the bat phone in regards to WhatsApp. WhatsApp is where all clients can contact me. I see DMs on every social media platform, but my clients know WhatsApp is where they get me. And so it's having the same thing with mortgage brokers. And I work with brokers on this all the time. It's Zoom, WhatsApp, they're kind of the the, the, the top tier of this. You decide which is your communication path for you and make it clear to the client. I see advisors do this. They say, I'll communicate with you however you want. Phone call, email, you know, Zoom, whatever you want. No, because it makes it the clients are coming to you because they want you to lead the process. And so it makes them unclear as to how they should contact you. If you make it really clear to them as this is how you contact me and I will see it and I will get back in touch with you. 
they will feel significantly more secure. And the whole idea is making them feel secure. We're trying to make them feel like you are somebody who can guide them through the process. That's the whole idea of this. And so if you start to lose that trust and it's just kind of a bit willy nilly and a little bit up in the air and it looks like you haven't got a plan, not a good idea. People are not going to like that. And that's how you're going to then start to lose sales. Number four we have is create urgency. It's great trying to spell this as a dyslexic. It's lovely. We want to create urgency without pressure, but we do want to make it very clear to, to our clients that we are busy and that this is our time to see them. But after that, we aren't really able to help. And what do I mean by this? I have a client of mine who actually does a discovery call with a client and then sends them to their administrator. Their administrator gets them all the documents and she, they are forbidden to speak to the advisor until all the documents are in. The administrator becomes the gatekeeper and just stops it. I love this. And many of you probably watching this will think that's, oh my gosh, that's terrible. This advisor is a multiple six figure business like writer. They do very, very well on their own. She's on her own with an administrator and she's a machine with business. And again, why is that the case? Because it is pressure. There is creating urgency. I need those documents in. I can't progress until you have given me those. Why is this important? Because then once you've given me those, those documents, I can then do everything you need me to do. It makes them actually act. It's what, why I'm a big advocate. And again, goes to the win without pitching manifesto. You shouldn't be doing quotes. You should not be doing research. You should not be doing quotes for clients who have not committed to wanting to use you, who have not said, I am going to use you, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. The fifth one is social proof. This one is going to be before the actual sale. If you're trying to close more mortgage deals, you can close more by kind of pre-closing them through social media, through content marketing and demonstrating that you do the job well. If you do that, more and more people will be more than happy to work with you. And many of the clients who I've worked with, a lot of the feedback they get is people who come on a call and say, I'm 100% all in. I know you're my mortgage broker. I just needed to find a house. And that is the type of feedback you want. They are so already locked in to what you do because of social proof that it absolutely pushes them to decide that it's time for them to, to take action with you. And that is a, such an easy way to improve your sales. And yet again, very overlooked because most people just chuck up testimonials. We don't want testimonials. We want true social proof. We want stuff like I showed you at the beginning. We want case studies. We want stories. All of that stuff is going to drive authority and trust with your clients. And that's going to make them want to buy from you. Let's dive a little bit into how to increase your closing rate itself. And you know what? It is a simple, this is a very simple way. We've gone through all these fancy techniques, but how do you actually increase your closing rate? I'm going to show you on the whiteboard. You ready? Ask, ask for it. That is all you need to do. You need to ask for the sale. This is crazy. I know you might think, what do you want about Ash? At the end of your first initial appointment, we established it right at the beginning. It is a fit check. It is this idea of, are we a good fit together? Should we be working together? These are all very important questions. And you should establish with the client that you think that it's a good fit. So they pass your side of the test. And now you're saying to them, so my only question to you is, do you want to work with me? Close them down. Do not get stuck in this would you like to me to proceed further? Would you like me to do some more research? These are all ambiguous. They're all aloof. We need to definitive. Yes. Do you want me to be your mortgage broker? That is the thing we're after. Do you want me to be your mortgage broker? Ask them. And people are so scared of asking. And there is no reason why you need to be scared. At the end of the day, your entire job is to make them make a decision. And the last thing you want to do is waste time and money on people who aren't going to work with you. And so if you have a discovery call and you get to the end of that discovery call, your goal is to try and decide to get them to say yes or no. And if they say no, that's still a good outcome for you and for them. If they say no, they are now one step further. Okay, we know that's not for us. And you know that's not somebody to waste your time on. Don't try and win people over. Don't try and talk them into the sale. Don't try and negotiate your fees. Ask them if they want to work with you. And if they don't want to work with you after you've delivered and you've done all those things, you've been active listening, you've done all the steps I've said, read that book. If they still don't want to go, it's not going to be. And that's okay. 
move on to the next one. The next one will be there and they will say yes. Now, if you like this video and you want to learn more about how to get free leads on Facebook, so how to use social media to generate free business and, like I said, improve that closing rate, check out this video on screen right now where I break that down in way more detail. Come on, give it a click and I'll see you in the next one.